in the impeachment trial. And Donald Trump is in Iowa for his campaign rally. OU Nightly starts now. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Austin Hernandez. And I'm Chloe Sparks. We begin tonight with breaking news. The World Health Organization has declared a global health emergency over the coronavirus. OU Nightly Health Beat reporter Kayla Davis is following this story and joins us now with the very latest. Kayla. Yes, Austin. Just this afternoon, the World Health Organization and the United Nations classified this as a global health emergency. That's because the coronavirus has now spread to more than a dozen countries, including the United States. The coronavirus started in China, and now people are standing in three-hour-long lines just to buy surgical masks that they hope will protect them. So far, China has reported 7,800 cases and 170 deaths. The virus has been reported in the U.S., Canada, France, Germany, Japan, South Korea, and Vietnam. Some people in Hong Kong say they think a slow reaction to the illness is contributing to how fast it has spread. They seem not to have uh, anticipated the seriousness of the problem and that it, it came so quickly. A declaration of a global emergency typically means more money and resources so that people around the world can take precautions and it also may prompt more travel bans. Doctors say right now they consider most U.S. citizens at a very low risk for contracting the virus if they aren't traveling in China. I'll be back later in the newscast with an update and the rest of today's health headlines. Chloe? Thank you, Kayla. Tonight, Trump is holding a campaign rally in Iowa. OU Nightly's Tori King met with supporters to hear about their excitement for the rally. I'm here in Des Moines, Iowa. I'm at Drake University right now. This is where President Donald Trump is going to hold his rally tonight at 7 p.m. I don't know if you can see my breath or not, but it's cold. It's 22 degrees outside. But the cold won't stop these supporters from coming out. In fact, people are already lining up. Some even camped overnight. Oh, yeah, I'm going to drink some coffee, hang out with some other great people that are having fun, you know, from, from other parts of Iowa. I got up this morning and left at 7. Got here about... Uh, I don't know, 7.30 or so? We got out here about uh, about 6.30. 6.30? So 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30, somewhere around there, yes. When asked about policy, they had a lot to say. Well, I do like his economic policies. Um, I like the fact that he's blunt. You know, he says what's on his mind. It's not filtered. It's not like a politician that comes out and says something that really sounds great that means nothing. When he says something, he means it. I certainly am a big fan of the tax cuts, but I'm also a, a fan of the deregulation that he's affected. That has a huge impact on our economy. For most people here, seeing President Donald Trump is well worth the wait. And for now, it's only a few hours away. Here at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, Tori King, Gaylord News. I mean, history is in the making. 22 degrees to be a part of that. I'll take it. Audrey Goodson has that story and the rest of today's headlines from around the world. She joins us in the News Center now. Audrey. Thanks, Austin. Donald Trump's impeachment trial continues today with question and answer period with Chief Justice John Roberts. Roberts refused to read a question from Kentucky Senator Ron Rand Paul regarding the name of Ukrainian whistleblower. Before the session began, Roberts stated that he would not answer any questions regarding the whistleblower's name. There have been other questions regarding to the whistleblower that Roberts has read, including identifying information. Roberts presides over the Trump Senate impeachment trial. Jacob Blair Scott, a Mississippi man added to the U.S. Marshals' 15 most wanted fugitives list, has been found in an RV park in Antlers, Oklahoma. He was identified and arrested late Wednesday night after faking his own death to avoid a child rape charge. Authorities were able to identify and verify Scott by his tattoos, leading him to admit to his identity. This case, which involves a 14-year-old family member, has Scott facing charges of sexual battery, touching a minor, and exploitation of a child. He is currently in custody. Oklahoma Kev Governor Kevin Stitt has announced a new plan for Medicaid in the Sooner State. Stitt's plan includes focusing on implementing stronger care performance and rewarding health outcomes. This plan has come from a recent push in years to expand Medicaid statewide. 
to make the new proposal possible, the Oklahoma Health Care Authority will be applying for federal funds and HAO flexibility waivers. However, the plan faces opposition due to the cost of expansion. Chloe, this will be affecting Oklahomans all over the state. Thank you, Audrey. It will. The cost of living on the OU campus will soon be going up. Just hours ago, the Board of Regents voted to approve a price hike. OU Nightly's Cal Day is live with just how much this will cost. Yeah, good evening, Chloe. I'm just outside the Walker Tower right here on campus where several freshmen call this place home every semester. And the ones that do next semester are going to be paying a little bit more out of their pocket. This comes just after the Board of Regents voted to approve a spike hike that was recommended by President Harris. Now, uh, to get things started, standard meal plans, the price for those are increasing by 3%. Now, these are the meal plans often used by freshmen and other students who live on campus, so those are going up. And then for students who elect to live in the on-campus uh, dorms like the Towers, the David Boren Hall and the Quads, other buildings like that, they're also going to see a 3% increase. Now for the residential colleges, that number has been doubled to 6%. So students who live in Headington or Dunham next year, they're going to see or be paying 6% more than they are this year. Now comparing these numbers to the rest of the 10 schools in the Big 12 Conference, Oklahoma ranks about the middle of the pack. So you'll see TCU and Baylor, the two private schools, rank first and second. Oklahoma nestled right in there at sixth, uh, just ahead of West Virginia and right behind Kansas, uh, two spots higher than our neighbors up north at Oklahoma State. And Chloe, this is the first time under President Harris that tuition, or uh, not tuition, but housing rates have increased. For now, we're live in Norman, Cal Day, OU Nightly. Thank you, Cal. Tyler Pardun joins us now with the first look at weather. Tyler. Hey, yeah, so you know, it's been very gray. It's been cloudy today. And you know, that bulk of that cloud cover is extended into portions of central Oklahoma. So our temperatures are really only up to 40 degrees right now, 39 in Oklahoma City. 40 in Ardmore and 42 up in McCall or Muskogee at this hour. And if we take a look at the current temperatures across the entire United States, you can see a bulk of that uh, Gulf moisture is hugging the coastline at the moment. 58 right now in New Orleans, 46 uh, up in Memphis. So our 40 degree temperature compared to what they're seeing uh, down and towards the southeast is, uh, you know, it's quite warmer down there than it is here. But I'll tell you, over the coming days, uh, we'll be seeing a lot more sunshine, 20 degree above average temperatures coming in. So that high pressure kicks in towards the west and that will allow all that moisture to surge into our, our region that will be allowing temperatures to flourish up towards that 70 degree mark. So you know what guys, it's gonna be a fantastic weekend. Get out and enjoy it. My full forecast come up in just a bit guys. Right now I'll send it back. After the break, you will hear more from OU Nightly reporter Kayla Davis about their coronavirus that has the world in a global emergency. Plus, straight ahead on OU Nightly, you will find out about the new exhibits opening right here on campus that pay tribute to a renowned Oklahoma architect.
At the beginning of the newscast, we told you about global health emergency issued over the coronavirus. Kayla Davis is back with the details on the virus in the United States. Kayla. Austin, we know there are six reported cases of the coronavirus in the United States. Two cases each in Illinois and California, and one each in Arizona and Washington State. Nearly 200 Americans landed at a California military base after their evacuation from Wuhan, China, the epicenter of the deadly coronavirus. U.S. health officials will not issue a blanket quarantine for the plane passengers, but they are being voluntarily held there to monitor, monitor any related symptoms. The CDC is also taking measures to protect them, their loved ones, and their communities. And the American Lung Association gave Oklahoma failing grades in the State of Tobacco Control Report. Oklahoma received Ds in four categories and an F in another. The association wants to see the state implement comprehensive bans on smoking inside public establishments, as well as prohibiting cities and counties from setting stronger limits on smoking than the state itself. Some tobacco bills are already up for consideration in the coming legislative session. One includes the raising the minimum age for buying tobacco products to 21 in order to match the new federal age limit. And for the first time in four years, life expectancy in the U.S. has raised based on the 2018 statistics. The new government reports released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says the average lifespan is up to 78.7 years. This is an increase of about 0.1. The rise in life expectancy is due to the decrease in death rates for the six leading causes of death in the U.S., including cancer, drug overdoses, and heart disease. And Chloe, lucky for us, women are still expected to live about five years longer than men. That is lucky for us. Thank you, Kayla. The Fred Jones Art Museum hosts a new exhibition to pay tribute to renowned Oklahoma architect Bruce Goff. The exhibition called Renegades opened last week and features many buildings Goff designed over his lifetime. Goff also helped foster an innovative school of thought for the OU Architecture College during his time at OU. The director of communication, Kaylee Kane, says this features not only Goff, but also the Architecture College on campus. The exhibition is focused on showing the imprint Goff made on architecture and on the university with his ideas. This was a dynamic and groundbreaking school, and it still is to this day what the College of Architecture is doing. The exhibition had a great turnout for the opening and projects it will have even more popularity. Renegades will remain in the museum until April 5th. OU Housing and Food has introduced new ways for you to go green at etc. However, these eco-friendly options might be out of grasp for a while. And it's been very gray and cloudy these past couple days, but that actually set a record. My full forecast coming up just after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. My dress down to my knees. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. 
Why? You can just say whatever you want. About the weather. <laughs> Back to OU night. Breeze right now out in Norman. You know, gray skies out there. You can see it right behind me there. And you know, winds are calm right now. The dew points at 70. Per, or the dew points at 30 degrees. Relative humidity is at 70 percent, and that will be increasing overnight uh, tonight. And when those clouds will also be uh, on the increase. So here's the bulk of that cloud cover at the moment, just hovering over portions of the central part of the state, and even up towards northeast as well into Muskogee, Tulsa and even up into Miami. And actually, all this cloud cover throughout the entire month of January has set a record, about six, the sixth cloudiest January in 16 years. So we've seen about 8% of our normal possible sunshine for this month. Um, so again, so the clouds will be on the uh, increase tonight and we'll be sticking around throughout half the day tomorrow. But you know, we got a big warm up ahead once those clouds be on the decrease. Uh, going into Saturday into Sunday, we're seeing a temperature of 70 degrees, flirting with that 70 degree mark, which is about 20 degrees above normal. It's fantastic. It's going to be a great weekend. Go out there, enjoy it while you can. Um, so again, so here's that our radar forecast going in uh, into Friday around the 10 o'clock hour. There's that front. So we got 40, uh, just lower 40 degree, de or degree temperatures on the eastern side, and we got northerly flow on the back side of this front that will be gusting up to about 10 to 15 miles per hour at times. And and again, so Friday at 5 o'clock hour, we'll be seeing temperatures in the upper 40s, maybe even some 50s in some spots. And then for Saturday, all those clouds clear out. It's going to be a beautiful day for the start of the day on Saturday and even on into Sunday. So overnight tonight, we'll see a low temperature of 32 degrees, 31 in Oklahoma City, and 32 down in Ardmore overnight tonight. And then tomorrow, we'll see our daytime high temperature of 51, 51 in Oklahoma City, 53 in Ardmore, and 48 up in the Panhandle. So again, for Friday, be windy in the morning once that front comes through, be clearing out throughout the rest of the day and leading into a pleasant Saturday with highs in the 60s. So there's that full seven day forecast. You know, you guys, it's going to be a fantastic weekend to go out and enjoy it, right? Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you, Tyler. You bet. OU Housing and Food Services is trying to do their part in contributing towards sustainable actions on the campus. Etc. is now selling reusable shopping bags that students can buy for one meal point. The green bags were introduced at the beginning of the semester as well as reusable straws. Etc. is placing another order of green bags because there are currently less than 15 bags available for students. Addison, and people are using them. Find a rally. So I think it's like really good for them to actually join in and like do somewhat of a contribution to environmental like safety and. It may not be like super big, but it's actually like making a big impact somewhere. The reusable straws are currently sold out and the next order of green bags is expected to arrive mid-February. Yeah, Chloe, a Sooner is making headlines early on this season. Shannon Earhart gives us the details in sports. Shannon. You'll be surprised to find that we have a preseason player of the year watch and no, it's not football, which means it's not a quarterback either. Find out who's on watch next.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Shannon Earhart here to deliver your sports news. Last night, Vanessa Bryant broke the silence with an Instagram post about the recent tragedy. In the heartfelt post, Vanessa said, quote, I'm not sure what our lives hold beyond today, and it's impossible to imagine life without them. But we eat, wake up each day trying to keep pushing because Kobe and our baby girl Gigi are shining on us to light the way. Later that night, the Lakers released a tweet expressing their sorrow by the sudden loss of Kobe, who was more than just a basketball player. Here is the most recent footage of the crash where investigators are still in search for what went wrong. To honor the family, the Mamba Sports Foundation set up the Mamba on Three Fund to support the families affected by this devastation. Donations are welcome at mambasportsfoundation.org. And OU men's basketball fell below 500 last night with a 61-53 loss against Kansas State. That makes sense considering the Sooners turned over the ball 19 times, leading to 18 free points for the Cats. OU's offense slacked as they went 18-51 of 51 from the floor. It looked like the Sooners fell into a trap game with Bedlam on their minds this Saturday. And it's softball season, and OU already has three players named to the Player of the Year watch list. This trio consists of sophomore Grace Green, junior Jocelyn Alo, and senior Giselle Juarez. Juarez was named first team All-American in 2019 with Green and Alo as runner-ups. The Sooners have a younger team this season, but Juarez doesn't seem phased. I feel like I've been here all four years, which sounds crazy, but um, I mean, I don't know. It was just really exciting last year, and I'm just excited to get back with the team this year. And like, we have a lot of newcomers, but I feel like they've been here forever too. So that's really exciting. Tossing over to baseball, four Sooners were selected to the preseason All Big 12 team. The two seniors and two juniors from OU will play six, will play alongside six Red Raiders, two Baylor Bears, a pair of Longhorns, and a couple of Mountaineers. K-State and OS Who have one player apiece on the team. The selected Sooners are Brady Lindsay, Jason Ruffcorn, Cade Cavelli, and Levi Prater. Women's Gym is back in action tomorrow to host Iowa State. KJ Kindler and her squad are 13-0 against the Cyclones and seem to be untouchable with a record of 9-0 on the season. Now Maggie Nichols is off to a terrific start for her senior year, earning a pair of perfect 10s on vault for two straight meets. This Big 12 matchup will be the first at home this season. The OKC Thunder battled the Sacramento Kings last night on the road. The Thunder are in a one-game range of the Rockets, looking to jump to that number six spot. OKC played tough defense, holding the Kings to just 23% from behind the arc and never fell behind. Now the energy showed as the Thunder took to the dub 120 to 100. So I don't know if y'all saw that game last night, but that was phenomenal. Great play, it was. especially in the third quarter. Who would have thought at the beginning of the season, who would have thought that the Thunder would be rolling like they are right now? I mean, Not I wouldn't me. have. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Houston, but Thunder up. Exactly, exactly. We're coming for you. Ah, thank you, Shannon. Well, we all know that a healthy diet and exercise are important for humans. And apparently they are for animals as well. How a diet helped one feathered friend get off its feet. Straight ahead on OU Nightly. Looks normal. Okay. I'm Belle Trevino at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Trump's administration, okay.
I'm Belle Trevino at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Trump's administration takes a risk with a Medicaid block grant that could help the program financially, but is an unpopular idea. The plan is for Medicaid to have a new capped funding. For example, normally all drugs are covered, but this would cover only a select few. Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt is calling it a game changer, wanting Oklahoma to apply the waiver. Back to y'all in the studio. Thanks, Bell. An owl was recently released into the wild after having to lose a little weight before he could leave the sanctuary. Yeah, weighing in at a whopping half a pound, the owl was considered a third heavier than a healthy owl. The owl was released today after spending a week in the sanctuary trying to lose that holiday weight. Tyler, one last weather recap before you know, we sign off. Yeah, if we put on a seven-day forecast, you can see we have a big warming trend Coming up, there it is, look at that, 70 degrees for Sunday on Groundhog's Day. It's going to be a fantastic day. Go out and enjoy yourself, and then the cold air returns at the early part of next week. So enjoy it now because it won't last long. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for OU Nightly. Be sure to tune in next week. We will be streaming live on Facebook at 430. All right, have a great night. Good night, guys.